All right, today while paying bills, I was reminded of a question that I frequently uh, fielded back in the day, and that was, when can I drop full coverage from my car? Um, if, if you've been paying attention to your car insurance bills, uh, apparently most car insurance, on average, to have full coverage on a car tends to cost people about uh, fifteen to $1,600 a year. So any chance that you might have to save some money on that seems like a great thing. Now, by full coverage, it can vary a little bit from state to state. In particular, what I'm referring to is comprehensive and collision. Collision coverage pays for any collision damage to your car, either, you know, you in another car in an accident or you hitting something like a pole. And comprehensive tends to take care of damage that's uh, like uh, forces of nature, fire, tornado, hailstorm, whatever the case may be, or vandalism, broken glass, things of that nature are usually covered under comprehensive. And typically, to have comprehensive, you have to have collision insurance on your car. So uh, back to the question at hand. The question at hand is, when can I drop full coverage on my car? Well... If you have uh, a loan against your car, if you're still making car payments, then most loans actually require you to keep and maintain coverage, uh, full coverage, on that car. So as far as when you can drop it, uh, sorry to say, but you can't until you get the, uh, the loan paid off on the car. Now, beyond that... When else can you uh, drop full coverage on a car? Well, the key is, do you have enough money saved up to replace that car? That's really what it comes down to. Uh, a lot of people might want to drop full coverage because they have high mileage. A lot of people might want to drop full coverage because finances are getting tight. They're living check to check, that kind of thing. And hey, uh, the $100 a month that they're paying extra to have that full coverage on their car might mean the difference between eating or not, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I understand that. I, I've, I've, I've been in those situations. Trust me, I have stories. Okay. But the real key is something you want to be doing is making sure that you've got an emergency fund built up that you can replace the car and then you have paid off the loan on that car. Now, there is a solution. There's a stopgap if, if, if you're trying to figure out how to finally make that happen. One of the things you can do is you can increase the deductible on your car. If, if you're not super well informed uh, as to what a deductible is, a deductible is a portion of the value of your car that you agree to be responsible for in the event of a loss. So if your car gets totaled, um, you're saying, hey, $500 of the cost of my whatever the car's value is, I I'll cover that. I, I don't need insurance to cover that. And typically, you could go down your deductible. I don't know if your deductible can be nothing. I would imagine that's something that varies from state to state. Um, but uh, I do know for a fact that ours can be as low as $250 because uh, that's what it's been at times. And you can increase it from there, usually in $250 to $500 increments. Now, uh, something I want you to keep in mind, whatever... Uh, liability coverages you have on your car that cover medical expenses, I would strongly encourage you to keep those in place for you and for uh, uninsured motorists, for anybody else that, that you might be involved in an accident with. Uh, those things are kind of the in case shit happen kind of things, and you want to keep those around. They are very worthwhile. Now, uh, back back to the issue at hand. I promised you you can reduce your costs if um, b based on your deductible. You could also, typically, you're encouraged to drop full coverage if you have been in an accident and your car has been totaled. I could give you an example of this. Uh, my son, his car was sitting out in front of our house. We got an ice storm, tree limb fell, bashed his car, dented it broke the window and everything else now my son because it was his only mode of transportation and he did not have an emergency fund at the time he was just getting started out he had full coverage on his car 
So, thanks to the comprehensive and collision, and uh, more the, the comprehensive, because that tree fell on his car, because it was an act of nature, they paid out. Uh, now, what they did do, though, the cost to repair the car was more than the car's worth. So, they paid out the, the what they estimated to be the value of the car. That's fine. Okay. Beyond that, though, um, he was then in turn able to buy back. Uh, they wanted him to sign over the title to him. They were going to scrap the car. He reduced the amount of funds that he received to, quote unquote, buy back the car from the insurance company and kept the car himself. He went and got the window repaired on the car, but did not get the body damage repaired on the car. And now he carries liability only on the car so that he is covered if he, uh, you know, is, is involved in an accident. It, it should take care of, of someone else's car. It should also take care of any injury costs that are associated with an accident. So that is example number one. Example number two is what not to do. Early on when my wife and I were married, we... Uh, we had two cars. We were starving college students. We both worked, but I was going to school for it full time. And both of us were working, uh, you know, minimum wage jobs at best. Okay. Well, I kept after my wife to reduce the costs of, uh, you know, to help me with cutting costs somewhere. And because I was not... Um, because nobody had talked with me about financial matters and whatnot, I wasn't sure where to begin. All I knew was that our car insurance payment was a mighty big bill, and I didn't like paying that big of a bill, and I definitely wanted to reduce that cost. Well, I kept on and kept on, and finally um, I, I wore my wife down. She didn't want to drop the coverage, but she relented. She was like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. It, it. You know, we definitely need to do something. We've got to start building an emergency fund, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we drop it. I win. Yay, right? Oh, no. No, my friends. That is not how it went at all. No, no, no. Less than a week later, my wife and I are driving along. We are heading to her parents' house, of course. And we are in a rather heated argument, Okay. When you're young, uh, that tends to happen, right? Passions flare. You fight about stupid crap that doesn't ultimately matter. And boy, did we have a good one going that day. Well, I decided that we uh, weren't going to her parents' house like that. So we're going to go uh, down by the river and we're going to finish hashing it out where, you know, and, and where we can be in a relaxed setting rather than going back home or going on. Okay, so you're all caught up with that. Well, great. So we get... Uh, I want to make sure that I don't have Horde come. Yeah. So uh, we start heading downtown, and I make a turn, an illegal turn, an illegal right turn where I wasn't supposed to, okay? Because I'm not paying attention. I'm more focused on the argument. I just want to get downtown, and I want to get this done because, you know, kind of bumming me out and ruining my day. <sighs> well, we, we, I turned right into a Mercedes and both of our cars went spinning okay so I ended up on the opposite side of the street uh, up on the sidewalk the Mercedes ended up on on the side that I had started from up up in a gas station parking lot actually oh yeah yeah well it gets better my friends come to find out that the driver of that Mercedes was an off-duty police officer Oh, yeah, the plot thickens, okay? So he's an off-duty police officer. Next thing I know, we, we had just barely gotten done spinning. We, we hadn't even gotten out of the car. Uh, I turned to my wife, and I was like, shut up. Don't say a word, because I knew what the next thing to come out of our mouth was, because we had just dropped full coverage a week before, okay? Then, in the rear view, uh, I start seeing... Uh, police lights uh, coming up behind us and i start freaking out i'd made an illegal turn the accident was all my fault and i'm like oh holy crap because there is like four cop cars just coming right up behind us i'm like are you kidding me 
And come to find out, the guy was, uh, like I said, an off-duty police officer. He was on his way to a family function. The other cop cars that were following him were other family members who had also just gotten off work and were heading to this family function. Before I could say anything, he tells his friends, uh, the other cops, that... Um, uh, he was in my blind spot, and I just didn't see him, and all I was trying to do was merge. That was, was not what was happening at all, but I was too scared to say anything. I mean, you know, okay, uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I was freaking out. Uh, keep in mind, young, the starving college students, stupid kids, don't know nothing about nothing, and here we've just been in an accident, and there's like wall-to-wall -wall cops all around us. So we did not disavow him of his misapprehension. We, we let it go on because it was the best case scenario for us. He ended up writing it up that way on the report. And um, no big deal. Uh, insurance company. Uh, it was deemed actually a kind of a no-fault accident. And so each insurance company kind of took care of their own car even kind of thing. Uh, talk about the luckiest thing that could possibly happen huge huge blessings from heavenly father at that particular time okay but that still didn't solve our problem so we had no coverage on the car no emergency fund no way of of taking care of the car and oh yeah the car was totaled it was a mess thankfully at that time i knew an individual who did work on cars what what you would call a shade tree mechanic he had been a a, a full-on mechanic at one point in time but now worked a different job and uh, just did stuff on the side. So went to him. He loaned us his car and he worked on my wife's car. He had to tie a come along to it and attach it to a tree. And uh, did, the frame was bent. He, re, he unbent the frame. Uh, we were already on liability only. So... We, we just kept on with that. He got it back running good enough, and we, we kept driving that car for a, another several years until we finally got into a position where we could get a different car. However, that is not exactly the end of the story. It gets even better. So the guy, while he is working on my wife's car, that was our only car at the time, so he loans us a car to use. He just ha had a spare one laying around. So I'm using that to drive back and forth to work. And at that particular time, I worked third shift. Well, on my way to work, working third shift, uh, I'm heading to work during the evening rush hour. And I go to get on the expressway and I'm running late. I'm flying. A lady uh, is driving along and she decides, I go to go around her. She's in the, the slow lane. I go to pass her. She is poking. And still decides that for whatever reason she wanted to be in the fast lane just as I'm getting ready to roar past her. Well, needless to say, this did not go well. Well, unbeknownst to me, this poor guy's car had a brake that would stick. And it full on locked up and would not release. And because the brake stuck, it sent me spinning down the expressway. I ended up not hitting anybody but wedging the trunk of the car underneath uh the the guardrail the little old lady that had caused this whole problem pulls up goes are you okay i'm like yeah i think so she goes on so we wrecked the the guy's car i know none of this has much to do with the deductible but boy is it an interesting series of events that that happened as a result so i'm scared to death to tell this poor guy that, that we have totaled his car the car that he had loaned us while he's fixing our car so, uh, needless to say, I'm stressed out. I'm trying to figure out what to do. Um, I go to work. My wife shows up. Uh, uh, I, I forget how she showed up. Anyway, we had to go and tell the, the guy, he worked at uh, a building right behind my work, that his car was busted. So, my wife goes in, and she's... she's dreading telling him this stuff right she was doing it for me because i still had to stay at work so she walks over there they they're all happy go lucky hey how's it going blah 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 and they could tell that something's wrong finally they pry it out of her 
and they start laughing. They are just cracking up. They're like, is, is he all right? Is everybody all right? And she's like, yeah, nobody was hurt. He didn't hit anybody else. He just, he totaled your car. And we are so sorry. Uh, I don't know what we could do to fix it. We, again, had no money, right? <laughs> they were fixing our car. And we wrecked their car. So, well, come to find out, it ended up being a blessing for them as well. They um, had a loan against the car, but they had insurance against the car because of this loan somehow for more than the car was worth. So us totaling this car uh, got them out from under the loan, got them a little extra money over and above whatever the value of the car was, and uh, it, it solved two problems for them. Well, sure enough, he was able to fix up that car, the car that we had totaled for him, the one he had loaned to us, and he was able to sell it to somebody else that had no car for... $400. So he made out like a fat rat on that deal. Now, I know none of this helps with the decision of, hey, when can I drive full coverage on my car? But I doubt that you will be as lucky as we got in that particular situation. Things could have gone much, much worse. No emergency fund, no car, the whole nine yards. So please, if you're thinking about reducing full coverage on your car going down to the bare minimum make sure that you've got an emergency fund set aside to replace your car so that you still have a way of getting back and forth to work and if you have other questions if there's something that maybe i didn't cover whatever the case may be then hit me with them in the comments below send them to me at fusty and finance at gmail.com and uh, be on the lookout for my next video